Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Lend me the stone strength of the past, and I will give you the gossamer wings of the future. Yes, for what is to come can only be the fruition of what has been. And what is the future? Only the past, striving to be born. And the child, after all, is really the father of the man. You... You are her child. Yes. Her illegitimate child. Please. Then it's true. Those ugly whispers, those foul rumors are true. Leave my house. Please help me. I'm sorry for you, but I'm powerless to help you. I haven't done anything. For the iniquity of the fathers shall be visited upon the children of the third and fourth generation. mystery drama, Sins of the Fathers, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Patricia Elliott. I'll be back shortly with Act One. As the poet said, a great flame may follow a tiny spark. True enough. And sometimes a towering conflagration may erupt without any spark at all. There is such a thing in nature as spontaneous combustion, and it occurs when opposing forces reach a boiling or burning point and simply must explode. Spontaneous combustion may also take place in the human heart, mind, or soul. Hi, Dad. I'm home. Just in time. What is that heavenly aroma? Medaillon de bif. Oh, listen to him. <laughs> Look, if you're going to cook it French, you got to pronounce it French. You know, Dad... I have never seen you look so good. Well, I never felt so good. <laughs> you should hear most people complain about their parents who've retired. Harriet's father just doesn't know what to do with his time. Well, he could give some of it to me. Yes. I wish Mom were here. Yeah. Dad, I know you're having a lot of fun cooking, playing golf, taking all those courses, but... You always wanted to travel. Well, I'll get around to it. When? Well... Well, this is a switch. You feel you have to stay home and keep house for me? You know, you really ought to get married, Felice. Hey, should we let this glorious dinner get cold? Pass your plate. Jerry Spooner called. Yeah, he's really a great-looking guy, you know. He's got a terrific job, and he's going places. And he is crazy about you. Dad, you outdid yourself with this sauce. What kind of guy are you looking for, anyhow? Well, I guess I want a guy just like the guy that married dear old mom. Yeah? Well, listen. Us terrific daddies don't necessarily make the best husbands. Well, I'll take that chance. So how did the, all you ink-stained wretches of the press do today? I, for one, struck out. You know Jenny Carroll's been subpoenaed to appear before the grand jury. Mm -hmm. Well, they think she could tell them something about organized crime in this town. Well, if she wanted to, she could tell them everything. How many deals have been engineered in that nightclub of hers? <laughs> nightclub? I'm being very generous. I wanted an interview. Oh, I couldn't get past the doorman at her apartment house. She wouldn't tell you anything important anyhow. Jenny Carroll never did like the media. You're telling me. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to give up on that idea. You really want that interview? Well, I wouldn't say I'd give my right arm to get it, but uh, it would score points with the managing editor. <laughs> well, why not? 
Find out what? After dinner, shape up at Jenny Carroll's apartment. But I told you. The doorman won't let me get to first base. This time, you're going to reach home plate. Dad, do you know what you're saying? As soon as you leave, I'm going to make a phone call. <gasps> do you mean you know Jenny Carroll? Now, you just be a good little girl and eat up all your pommes frites, your petit pois, and your <laughs> coup la crème avec frais des bois, and go to work. <laughs> oh, Dad, you're wonderful. I know. <laughs> You're Eddie Powers' kid, huh? You know my father, Miss Carroll? Oh, I remember Eddie. <laughs> he was an honest cop. He wouldn't take 15 cents. And he wouldn't avail himself of any of the privileges of the club either. <laughs> if you follow my drift. Have a drink. Well, thank you. Maybe some white wine. Oh, yeah, but you'll never catch up with me like that. So, what do you want to talk about, huh? Well, in these days of... Uh... <laughs> women's lib, it occurs to me that you've been a woman on your own for a long, long time. Sweetie, women like me have always been on our own. And uh, you must have seen a great many changes. Mm, nothing changes. In the end, it's the woman who always pays the tab. Like with this grand jury. I'm being set up to take the fall. In what way? Detective Eddie Powers, your father. It's got to be 25 years, you know. But I never forgot him. He always gave me a break. Do you think the special prosecutor has any evidence? Miss Carroll? I just asked you. Yeah, if you... yeah, I heard you. Is something wrong? You seem to be staring at me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess I am. I... I just can't get over it. Uh, how much you resemble Eddie? Oh, I should. <laughs> He's my father. Yeah, I, I, I guess he is. <laughs> I can assure you that he is. Well, you know what? It goes to prove. I guess if people live together long enough and they're happy together, they get to look like each other. Listen, kid, I, I'm glad it worked out in your situation. You're glad what? worked out. Well, a lot of them don't, you know. Oh, I, I could tell you about cases. What are you talking about? Well, you know what I'm talking about. The thing. What thing? The adoption. The adoption. Miss Carol, what are you saying? What are you saying? Oh. Oh, good Lord. What am I saying? Well, uh, nothing. Tell me. No, uh, believe me, it, it's nothing. Are you saying I was adopted? <laughs> oh, look, you, you, you don't want to listen to me. Why did you say I was adopted? Do I know what I'm saying? Look at me. Listen, kid, I, I'm going up against a grand jury tomorrow. I, if I don't talk, I go to jail. If I sing, I'll be dead in a week. So... <laughs> Maybe I got a little bit out of my head, huh? Why did you say I was adopted? Why? Please, look, in in the middle of all this, the, the only guy who ever treated me like a lady in my whole life calls me up out of a bright blue sky. Hey, my kid's a reporter. Give her a break. Yes. And so my mind goes back maybe 25 years. See, this nice cop... He and his wife wanted a kid more than anything else in the world. They couldn't have one. And then I hear they adopted one. Go on. Everybody knew it. It was no secret. And everybody who adopts a kid tells a kid about it. I mean, you had to know. Hey! Hey, wait! Wait, where are you going? back early. How'd it go? Did you find out anything? I guess you could say I found out everything. That's going to be some article. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't I tell you what? Why didn't you tell me about the biggest thing that happened in my life? Oh, no. No. Why? Look, Felice. Why? Well, your mother and I... <sighs> I, I guess it was wrong not to. I admit it. Oh, yes. Well, then why we, didn't we... you tell me? 
Well, we decided to wait until, until you were older, and then... I don't know, we just kept putting it off. Why? Because we were scared. Of what? Of those two other people, whoever they were. Why? A, a, a child has a right to know. To know what? Who she is. You know who you are. Felice Powers. But who am I really? Really? Whose blood do I have? Till tonight it didn't matter. Why should it matter now? You should have told me. I know. I know. And maybe we were wrong, but we felt if we did tell you, it would be like saying that you're something less than our own child. And it's for those people whose blood you have. Remember, they didn't want to keep you. Maybe they couldn't keep me. If you were important enough, if you meant enough to them, they'd have found a way. We wanted to spare you this. But I have to know who my real parents are. Betty Powers and I have been your real parents. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I shouldn't have put it that way. Felice, we thought we were doing the best thing for everybody. Look, Dad... What do you know about my real... I, I, I mean, about my other parents? Nothing. How did you get me? Oh, it was such a long time ago. How? Where? From whom? I have to know. I can't tell you anything. Is there someone who can? Well, is there? Yes, there is. Jenny. Jenny? Carol? Yes, Jenny Carol. What does she know? I guess she knows everything. Look, I I can't tell you how bad I feel. Then don't try. But it's just that I thought that you... It doesn't matter. Eddie Powers says you know everything. Oh, I see where he's just become Eddie Powers. Please. Look, he's the greatest guy that ever lived. Don't be mad at him. Please, tell me what you know. You have to tell me. Who was my real father? Your real father is Eddie Powers. Who was my father? I don't know. He said you knew everything. What's everything? She... <sighs> there was a girl who was working at the club. Well, was she my mother? Yeah. A girl who worked at your club. <sighs> uh, what did she do at the club? She was a dancer. And? Nothing else. Don't say that to make me feel better. She was different from the other girls. And besides, she had a steady boyfriend. He didn't mind that she worked in a place like yours. Oh, climb off it, kid. I know you're having a bad day. But I always ran a respectable joint. One day she comes into the office. I'm pregnant, she says. What was she going to do? What did you tell her? Well, I said, how about the father? She said he... He'd lost interest. She said she never wanted to see him again. She never told you who he was? Not a word. So I said, okay, have the kid, and we'll see it gets a good home. And that's what I did. I gave you to Eddie and Betty Powers. I never said a word who you were, where you came from. It was okay. They didn't want to know. Miss Carroll, what was my mother's name? Alice. Alice Jones. Alice Jones. <laughs> Uh, was that her real name? I don't know. Where did she come from? I don't know. But you have to know something. You have to be able to give me some kind of clue so I can find her. You'll never find her. Why not? Because she's dead. <laughs> A door opens suddenly to reveal the existence of another world. And just as suddenly, it closes, and the sight of that world is gone forever. For our Felicia Powers, it has been too much to understand. And the only answers seem to be in a dead and forgotten past. Possibly in Act Two, in just a few minutes. 
The world, said the philosopher, is a dark, dangerous, and uncharted ocean, and each of us is lost therein. Perhaps. But at least many of us have a compass of sorts. For instance, we know who we are and where we come from. And thus armed, we can better face the journey. But for some of us, there dawns a day when we suddenly discover that we know nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. Dead? She's dead? Yeah. Uh, and how do you know? I was there. Where? little place up in the country. Where in the country? It doesn't matter. It burned down years ago. She went there to get better. She got some infection. She died. There had to be a death certificate. There was. It said Alice Jones. And there had to be an address. There was. The club. Where was I born? Where is this little private hospital? Where? <laughs> or is it gone by this time, too? Well, as far as I know, it's still there. Then there's got to be a record. And my original birth certificate. When she went in there, she used the name of Betty Powers. She listed Eddie Powers as her husband. So there's only this one birth certificate. But you had to know something about her. Where she was from, who she was. Look, she came in one day and she auditioned. She did her job. She kept out of trouble. You said she had a boyfriend. Would you, would you know who he was? She said she had a boyfriend. I never saw him. Did she never mention his name? No, never. You, you mean you didn't know any of her friends? Oh, I don't think she had any. Well, what about the other girls in the club? She was a loner. She kept to herself. You know what I mean? There has to be something, something that you can tell me. There is. Forget it. No. Kid. Look, what do you want me to tell you, huh? Alice Jones, or whatever her name was, she was a kid with nice legs like a hundred thousand other kids looking to make it in the theater, what, TV, movies. After a while, they settle for joints like mine. Oh, or worse. Please. I can tell you, kid, it's a tough life. She wants a little fun, a little companionship. So there's a guy. Maybe he's a steady. Maybe he's a... A one-night stand. Please don't say that. Well, next thing she knows, the guy's gone. She's pregnant. She gives birth. She dies. How are you going to find out who she was? I'll find out. Somehow. Come on, kid. It was 25 years ago. It was another world, another time. Ancient history. It's over. It's done with. Not for me. Now, you said she died of an infection. That's what the doctor said. I say she died because she didn't want to live. But how lucky you are. You get a set of great parents, Eddie and Betty Powers. You could have done so much worse. So just let it alone, will you? I can't. I have to know who I am. Now, Miss Carroll, where did she live? Where? There has to be a record of it. Somewhere. Oh, let me try and remember. It was a place down on Sheridan Street. Wait, wait, give me a minute, huh? I'll think of the number. And what can I do for you? Mr. Paris? That's the name on the window. I understand you've had this dry cleaning shop here for more than 30 years. That's right. You want to buy the place? <laughs> well, I'm sure you must know everyone in the neighborhood. Look, uh, what are we trying to build here? Uh, this, Mr. Uh... Powers, I'm a reporter. I don't want to be interviewed. Does the name Alice Jones mean anything to you? Who's Alice Jones? She lived across the street in number 545. I never heard of her. Tried to think. About what? Well, I'm, I'm sure she must have come in here for her dry cleaning. Not recent. No, no, this would be at least uh, 25 years ago. Are you for real? I'm supposed to remember a person come in here 25 years well, ago. I'd hope that perhaps... I got hundreds of people coming in here every week. Look, look, look at this stuff hanging on the racks. All those tags. I don't remember half of them from yesterday even. You... Alice Jones. 545. I do remember her. You do? Uh, 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 tell me what you know about her. I know her name was Alice Jones, and she lived at 545. Oh. Uh, what else? Did she ever talk to you, say anything about herself? Well, what do you think I am, a psychiatrist? I'm a dry cleaner. Oh, uh, do you remember what she looked like? Um, well, she had dark hair. 
And she looked a little something like you. She did? Uh, 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 can't you tell me uh, anything else about her? No, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, do you know anybody at all who might be able to help me? This thing is very important to you, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, you see the sign on 545 across the street where it says owner management, Wilkinson Stove Out? Um, yes. They're the toughest landlords in the city. Before they let you rent, you got to give them more than references. They want the history of your life. I'm sorry, Mr. Stovall. I realize these records would go back a quarter of a century. My great-grandfather founded this firm during the administration of President Chester A. Arthur. We religiously preserve every piece of paper from that date forward. Uh, now, about Miss Alice Jones. And we require considerable personal information from our tenants, but we also pledge to protect their privacy. Miss Jones is dead. Ah. And what is the uh, nature of your interest? Uh, well, Mr. Stovall, I came in here prepared to, to tell you some elaborate yarn, but... I'm frightened. If you turn me down, I won't know what to do or where to go. Mr. Stovall, Alice Jones was my mother. This, uh, Miss Alice Jones was your mother? Yes, sir. I see. One moment. Uh, Miss Doughty, the inactive file in the 545 Sheridan building, the former tenant, Miss Alice Jones. Uh, thank you. Jones. Alice, single, age 19. 19. Employer of the Carroll Club. Was that her real name? A Alice Jones? Oh, yes, Alice Jones from North Faro. She gives us a reference to uh, uh, Mrs. Helen Bufogel. I is there such a place? I mean, uh, is there such a person? Miss Powers, Wilkinson and Stovall does not merely ask for references. We check them personally. North Faro is up near the state line. Mrs. Bufogel is a dance teacher. Or uh, was. Oh, thank you, Mr. Stovall. Thank you. Just a minute. Just a minute. I hear it. Um, uh, Mrs. Bufogel? <gasps> Alice! Alice! Uh, oh, Mrs. Bufogel, uh, uh, let, let me hear... Here, 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 let me help you. Hold on to me. Oh, I, I, I don't know what just here, came over me. Let me help you to that couch. Oh, no, no, I, I, I'll be all right. Oh, uh, are, are you sure? It's so, I, 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 I don't know what to say. I was thinking of a girl, a girl I knew, oh, so many years ago. Her name was Alice Jones. And and then the doorbell rang. And I opened the door. And there she was, standing before me. Alice Jones. Oh. But Alice Jones is dead. It must be, oh, 26 years. But hardly a week goes by that I don't think of her. But then I, I, I look like Alice Jones? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, who was Alice Jones? She, she was my star pupil. Oh. Oh, oh. What happened to her? She went to the big city, but she died. Oh. How? She, she was always frail. I, I don't think she had the stamina to be a dancer. I suppose it was the hard work, you know, the long hours. And they do eat the most dreadful, unwholesome food in the city. It was too much for her. Mm, yes, I suppose it was. Now, there are, or, or there were, it, it's been so long ago, evil-minded people who say that Alice Jones died in childbirth. That isn't true. Oh, oh it isn't. Well, how could she die in childbirth? 
She wasn't married. Oh, oh, I see. Well, let me assure you, my Alice was not that kind of a girl. Besides, she was keeping company with a very decent young man. Oh. Uh, did she tell you that? Oh, Alice Jones told me everything. After all, you see, I was the one who raised her. She was a little orphan girl, and the county boarded her with me. I taught her how to dance and how to behave like a lady. And oh, <laughs> oh my, she danced like an angel. That's why she went to the city. Did she, uh, ever say anything about her young man? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, he was very handsome and educated and wealthy. Did she tell you his name? His name? Yes, yes, she did. She told me his name. And she said I was to come to the wedding, which would be soon. Mm -hmm. I raised her in my own image to embody the three primary feminine values. Dignity, chastity, spirituality. You see, while she was trying to qualify for the ballet, I was terrified lest she be soiled by the city. <gasps> but my fears, of course, were groundless. Oh, I'm sure. She stayed at a special hotel for girls. Oh, she did? Yes. Oh, I would write to her there. It was called the Jenny Carroll Club. The Jenny Carroll Club? Mm -hmm. It was a place for unattached young females. Oh, I see. It is remarkable how much you resemble Alice. Um, you said that she told you her fiancé's name. Yes. Wonderful fellow he was. What a brilliant future he had. What a, a lucky girl she was. Uh, Mrs. Bufogel, mm. you, you wouldn't happen to uh, remember his name. His name? Well, of course I remember. His name was, uh... His name was, uh... Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. It'll come to me. It, it'll come to me. <laughs> she's thinking, this is an excellent time for us to take our second act intermission. We must admit, progress so far has been unusually smooth and quick. Sometimes these quests can go on for many long and weary years. Can it be this easy? That will be the business of Act Three in just a few minutes. As Mr. Shakespeare said, it's a wise father that knows his own child. But the thing can also be turned around. It's a wise child that knows its own father. It's a proposition that often arises in many special situations. And it sometimes requires the wisdom of a Solomon to come up with the right answer. You said you knew his name, M M Mrs. Viewfogel. Whose name? <laughs> the name of the man who was Alice Jones's fiancé? Oh, oh yes. Well, why do you want to know? Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, I... I, <laughs> I, I was just passing by. Oh, wait, no, let me look at you. I mean, really look at you. The bell rang and I opened the door. You were standing there. Why did you ring my bell? Well, you see, I, I wanted to stop and I, I had something I wanted to ask you. Yes. A, 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 a direction. Well, the, the moment I saw you... I knew who you were. I knew. I fought against it. But I knew. And I know now. You... You are her child. Oh. Yes, yes, Mrs. Bufogel, I then, am. Then it's true. This, this terrible thing, these ugly whispers, these vicious rumors, they were true. You, you are her child. Child. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, illegitimate child. Please. That girl, that girl upon whom I lavished m my affection, my tender concern, my earnest labor, for whom I worked and planned and dreamed and sacrificed. She betrayed me. No, Mrs. She Bo did. She disgraced Please. me. Listen to me. Listen to you. Why? Who are you? What 
Are you the offspring of a, a harlot? That isn't true. No. Well, what was she? she? She was my mother. She was also my daughter. Yes, she was my daughter in everything but blood. And now I have cast her out. You must cast her out also. No, don't say that. You forget her. Who was my father? You forget him too. He shared the sin with her. But who was you he? You cast them both out. Please tell Never. me. Never. But why not? Because the memory of it must be blotted out. It's important for me to know. It is more important for the sin to be forgotten and for all knowledge of this transgression to disappear from the face of the earth. And now... Please, would you just please leave my house? Mrs. Fogel, if you have any compassion no, you, at all... You, you are an intruder in my home. There is no one else I can ask. Leave my house, please. I am powerless to help you. It is written, The iniquity of the fathers shall be visited upon the children of the third and fourth generation. <laughs> Felice, you're home. Yes, Dad. If I'd known, I, uh, I, I'd come back earlier to cook some dinner. You want to go out? No. Thank you. Where have you been? I guess I don't have to ask. Felice, look, I know I, I, know I got off on the wrong foot on this thing. You, you have the right, maybe even the obligation, to find out who your biological parents were. How are you doing? Well, Dad, I'm stuck. I've reached the end of the trail. Well, these things most of the time are pretty much impossible. I know. You know, the years go by, the trails get cold. That's what I discovered. Most of them are so well covered up, you can never find them in the first place. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's why I have to ask you something. Anything. Who was my biological father? Why are you asking me, Felice? I mean, how would I know? You know. What are you saying? I'll tell you what I'm saying. I'm not a skilled, experienced detective. But 26 years after I was born, I had absolutely no trouble at all in finding out that my natural mother was a young girl named Alice Jones. Yeah? Yeah. So what problem would a skilled and experienced detective have 26 years ago while the trails were still hot? And before they could be covered up? <laughs> I know you. And I'm saying you'd want to know everything about me before you adopted me. Now, who was my father? You knew who the man was. Dad, are you going to deny it? No. Then are you going to tell me? At least it was something I had no business finding out. Who was he? Is he still alive? Please. I'll never let you off the hook. I should have let it alone. I should have accepted you as... as a gift. Which is what you were. That way, in time, we would have told you everything. No, I had to find out who he was. And then I was scared. Scared? Why? Because I was afraid you'd find him someday, and when you did... Yes? When I did, what would I do? You'd forget all about me. Why? Why would I ever do that? Because of, of who he is. What he's become. Well? Well, who is he? Felice, he was a smart young lawyer on his way up. Joe Blackwood. Yes? He became Senator Joseph B. Blackwood. S Senator Blackwood. Now you know. And he's my... Yes. What are you going to do? Well, I, I, I'm going to go see him. Is that wise? Yes, I said. I am going to go and see him. I know, but... Well, he want to see you. I'm sorry. I, I know what that must have sounded like, but it, it had to be asked. Of course he'll want to see me after all these years. 
Do you mean he never thinks of me? Well, he must wonder. Doesn't he wish that somehow... Well, maybe he did abandon me and, and, and my... Um, and her. But he was young. Who knows what pressures were on him. He, he's had such a long time to, to reflect, to reconsider. And I... Well, I... I, I owe it to him. Sure. And I... I owe it to myself. Miss Powers of the Post. Yes, Senator. Oh, your publisher, Mrs. Warburton, uh, Ella, is a very warm personal friend. Yes, sir. Well, shall we get to it? Won't you sit down? The easy chair, though. That's it. <laughs> now, you care for a drink? Uh, uh, uh no. Uh, thank you. Oh, yes, yes. It's a new breed of reporter today. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what would you like to ask me? Well, I... Uh... Oh, <laughs> you're new at this, aren't you? Now, don't blush. I can tell. I practically live with the media. <laughs> Toughest part of the job for a rookie is how to begin the interview. Let me help you through it. Uh, S Senator, I, I, Yes, Miss Barnes? I... Ah, now, that's part of what I mean. Never ask for anyone's attention unless you're prepared to ask a question. So, what was your question? Well, I... Uh... Ah, now, there's another thing. A matter of style... Look at your subject. Look him in the eye at all times. Are you scared? Yes. I didn't even have to ask. I could tell. Now, why are you frightened? Because. Be because. No, 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 no. You shouldn't be. No reason for it. Don't let me frighten you. Just look me in the eye uh, and Senator, fire away. Senator Blackwood. Oh, you're doing fine. Uh, Senator Blackwood, I I is it true that... <sighs> Is it true that you have a daughter? What did you say, young woman? Well, is it? Who told you? Where did you hear that? And don't hand me that guff about how a reporter has to protect her sources. Is it true? No one could ever hope to prove it. And let me tell you something for your own good, young lady. Are you saying it isn't true? You couldn't hope to sell that story. No one would dare buy it. There are laws of libel in this country. Then then it isn't true? What were you doing? Sharpshooting? I'll destroy you, Miss Powers. I'll break you. No one in the responsible media will ever hire you. For all practical purposes, you'll be dead. Now, get out of here. No, wait. <laughs> uh, wait, Miss Powers. Yes, Senator? Why should I impute any base motives? You didn't have any, did you? No, sir, I didn't. Oh, I know how it is. Correspondents sit around, have a few drinks. Somebody says, hey, you think we could ever get anything on a straight arrow like Joe Blackwood? And someone else says... Wouldn't it be something if he had an illegitimate kid somewhere? And you figured, hey, why not take that ball and run with it? <laughs> I'm sorry I lost my temper. It's all right. I uh, do have to make a plane to Washington, so if you'll excuse me. May I ask you just one more question, Senator? Well, of course. You're close to 60. You never married... Do you ever regret it? Uh, do I? I mean, 25 years ago, you might have met a, a girl, married her, and perhaps, well, had a son or a daughter. Do you ever think about it? No. Was there ever anyone you were in love with? Never. I see. Thank you for the interview, and and goodbye, Senator. Uh, Miss Powers, there, uh, there was a girl once, and uh, 
I thought that we would... But I made my choice. I let her go. Maybe I just didn't love her enough. Oh, I see. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Maybe because in a way you... You resemble her? Slightly. Uh, Do you... Ever think about her? Ever? Uh, every day. But I made my choice. This is what I want. I have no room in my life for anyone else. I see. Goodbye, Miss Powers. Goodbye, Senator Blackwood. Uh, uh, dinner ready? Here just in time. Mmm. What is that heavenly aroma? Cocoa, Van. You know, Dad, <laughs> I have never seen you look so good. I have never felt so good. I... I wish Mom were here. Yeah. <laughs> what a terrific family we were. Let's sit down before it gets cold. Dad, what a terrific family we still are. It was a German philosopher who said with typical Teutonic directness that it's rather easy to become a father, but rather difficult to be a father. And therein lies the entire point of our tale. Some men are of one type, some of the other. Who deserves the credit? The commandment tells us to honor thy father. So there is enough credit and appreciation for all. Honor me with your patience, and I shall return shortly. The eternal questions still remain unanswered. Who am I? What am I? From whence do I come? Where do I go? We look for answers to the past. But what is our past? Our parents? Grandparents? Great-grandparents? How much further back can most of us truthfully go? We say that blood will tell. But what can it tell? Who had our blood 500, 1,000, 10,000 years ago? Does it matter? Why do so many people make such an issue of it? Ah, well, that's also a mystery, isn't it? Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Mandel Kramer, Carol Titel, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery.